let's start with the very beginning of the request. When we load a page, the first file that's executed is public slash index.php. No matter what, this is where it all starts. So let's literally go through this file line by line and see what happens. The first thing it does is require this config slash bootstrap.php file. For our purposes, this isn't important. It requires the composer autoloader, and then the rest of this file is all about loading and normalizing environment variables. Sure, environment variables are important to Symfony, but if you want to understand the request response flow, not so much. Next, if we're in debug mode, it calls debug colon colon enable. That's great to set up some debugging tools, but not relevant to us. The first thing we care about is down here. Kernel equals new kernel. This is actually instantiating our source slash kernel.php class, which is the heart of our application. The kernel is passed to the environment as the first argument and a debug flag as the second. That controls a bunch of behavior, but isn't very important to the request response flow. But the next line is important. We always knew that there was a request object inside Symfony. If you ever wondered who creates the request and where, here's your answer. It's created in our code, not somewhere deep in the core. The colon colon create from globals method, I'll hold command or control to open that method inside Symfony, is a shortcut to create the request object and populate its data with the normal super global variables, like dollar sign underscore server and dollar sign underscore post. This gives us a nice request object that represents the current request info. The next line, oh, the next line. This is probably my favorite line of code in all of PHP. Response equals kernel arrow handle request. That runs our app. We don't know exactly what happens inside that method. That's what we're going to figure out. But isn't it beautiful? Our application and Symfony are not some weird global monster that takes over our PHP process and eats our objects. Nope, it's a pure function. Input request, output response, which is exactly what our job as a developer is. Understand the incoming request and use that to create a response. One of the properties of a pure function like this is that you can call it as many times as you want. So yes, in theory, a single kernel can handle multiple requests inside just one PHP process. In fact, let's do that. Up above, let's say request one equals request colon colon create, which is another shortcut to create a request object. Let's make this look like a request for our login page, pass slash login as the first arg. Now create a request to variable and pretend that this is a request for slash register. Could we run our kernel and get two responses for these two requests? Uh, totally. Response one equals kernel arrow handle request one. And then response two equals kernel arrow handle request two. Let's see what they look like. Dump response one, dump response two, and then die. Let's do this. Move over, refresh, and Check it out. We just handled two requests on the same page. The first does contain the HTML for the login page and the second for the registration page. Amazing. And this idea of handling multiple requests in Symfony is something that really does happen. It happens with sub requests, a topic that we will cover later in this tutorial, and some people use an event loop in PHP to boot a single kernel and then handle many real HTTP requests. Okay, remove all of this code. It's now obvious that if we really want to understand what happens inside Symfony, we need to find out what happens inside of this kernel arrow handle method. We're going to be opening a lot of core files. 
So make sure you have an easy way to jump to a file by typing a file name in your editor. In PHPStorm, I can hit Shift Shift to open a file called httpkernel.php, which lives deep inside Symfony. If you don't see it, make sure you have the Include Non-Project Items checkbox checked. PHPStorm usually does that automatically if you type a specific file name. Once inside, scroll down to the handle method. Okay, technically the kernel arrow handle method we saw in index.php is not the handle method in this class. Symfony first initializes the dependency injection container, the topic of a future deep dive tutorial, and then calls this method. The first thing I want you to notice is that the entire function is surrounded by a try catch block. So almost immediately when our app starts running, our code is surrounded by a try catch. That's not important yet, but later we'll see what happens when an exception is thrown from anywhere. The real logic of HTTP kernel lives in this handle raw method. Scroll down a little to find it. Ah yes, handle raw. This is the Symfony framework. These 50 lines of code are the heart of everything that happens in Symfony. And not just Symfony, these same 50 lines of code run Drupal, PHPBB, and many other things. So next, let's start our journey through this strange and wondrous method.